Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me on today's episode is Dr. Betsy Armenta Leva. Dr. Armenta Leva is a PhD student at Iowa State University. Betsy, welcome to the podcast. For anybody who hasn't had the pleasure of meeting you, Betsy, why don't you give them a brief introduction? Well, thank you uh, for having me, of course. I'm really happy to be here. As you mentioned, I'm a PhD student at Iowa State. I actually am a DVM from Mexico. I finished around 2019, then came here to do my master's. I work with Dr. Jeffrey Zimmerman and Dr. Luis Jimenez. And I'm currently doing my PhD, and I work uh, with diagnostics of infectious diseases in swine, really related to, to PCR sample types, um, sample treatment, and some part of the analysis, which is what we were talking uh, about today. United Animal Health has been innovating nutrition that feeds the animals that feed the world since 1956. Now a multinational ag biosciences company, we help people impact the health of their animals with less labor, less variation, less drag, less challenge, and less natural resources. Learn more at unitedanh.com. Yeah, you uh, you recently, Betsy, have presented on normalization of PCR results, um, and certainly PCR results are critical to swine health. Um, we use PCR uh, diagnostic technology um, extensively in the pig industry. Talk to us a little bit about normalization. Um, what what is normalization? You know, why why is it helpful in the overall PCR and diagnostic process? Of course. So, I mean, technically speaking, normalization is accounting for the variability in your technique, in your test, in this case, the PCR. I like seeing the analogy that it's kind of like pressing the tear button on a scale. You know, when you're weighing something, you don't want that added weight from the container. So you want to like remove that and focus on your, on the net weight of what you, whatever you're weighing. So in testing is kind of similar. You don't want uh, variation affecting your result. You want to focus in the case of PCR on your target concentration. You want to know how high or how low it is. So when we normalize, we kind of, um, what we do is we re-express our results in the context of a reference standard. And when we do that, we kind of um, create a baseline or we kind of standardize the values so that they're repeatable, they're comparable. Um, maybe you have or the audience have, has sent samples to one lab and they receive uh, maybe a CT value that they were not expecting. So they are like, okay, so let's retest. And when they retest, the CT is not the same. So when we normalize, we make sure that that difference in, in CT values is not influenced by the technician, by the pipetting errors, or by, um, I don't know, the reagents that they use in the lab. Talk to us about the, the normalization process, Betsy, or if there's multiple processes, what, what are the options out there for diagnostic labs to normalize PCR results and what's your preferred method? Right, so basically normalization methods in PCR are the absolute quantification, which is when a uh, uh, client asks through the video to do the quantification. Um, and also we have relative quantification, which is the method that we use in our lab. In the relative uh, quantification, we have what we call the efficiency standardized CQs or ECQs, which are basically uh, replicates of a reference standard that you include in every plate so that you uh, re-express your results of that plate um, every time you're testing and you account for that variability. So, I mean, there's advantage and disadvantage for both of them, like, I mean, the standard curve and the ECQs. But since the standard curve tends to be more labor um, intensive and like for the lab, it's like the standards are expensive and stuff. We, we prefer the, the ECQ methodology, which is pretty straightforward. It accounts for some of the most important sources of variation in PCR. And it gives you results that are comparable. I mean, 
if if you test today, you can compare to what you test tomorrow. So yeah, we we prefer the ECQ methodology. Is one of the benefits with normalization and the EZQ technology that I can better compare PCR results across the labs and potentially even across assays or test kits? Um, so, I mean, I've always been coached as a veterinarian, right? Like uh, the PCR done at Iowa State may give slightly different results than the one done at Illinois or Minnesota or Kansas State or Purdue or you name it, right? Does the normalization process get us closer to saying, okay, if I split samples, I truly can compare the results or no, it doesn't really take us to that level? No, that's the, I mean, it does take us to that level. That's the main benefit of normalizing, that's the main benefit of the ECQs because you're expressing your results. So whatever is happening in, let's say, the VDL at Iowa State is different to what's happening in the VDL at Illinois. So when they normalize, they remove that noise or that interference from, from their own protocols. So we can focus on that um, relative concentration of target and we can compare them. That's the main benefit. And I mean, when I say that we re-express the result, it doesn't mean that we're manipulating the data. We're just doing some calculations based on equations and, and numbers that are uh, inherent to the PCR. And then we're re-expressing the result to, to basically say, okay, how much target concentration do I have in my sample compared to the reference standard? But yeah, the main benefit is, is the um, comparability. And also the fact that when we use CTs, we don't really have a standard cutoff for samples. I mean, some labs use the greater than 37 or greater than 40. So when we use the ECQ methodology, we're able to calculate cutoffs based on probability. So now you have a choice to have your diagnostic sensitivity, the, your diagnostic specificity, and choose your own cutoff and say, okay, I want this because I want to be 100% specific. You cannot do that with the CTs. But with a normalized response with the ECQs, you can. So I would say that those are the two main benefits. Any other user benefits that folks should be aware of, of the normalization process? Anything else it can do for veterinarians, producers, or diagnostic labs should we should be aware of? I think another benefit of the ECQs is that, at least in my opinion, they improve a lot the visualization of the data. Um, sometimes with the CTs, because the range is kind of small, like you go from 25 to 35, when you try to plot that over time, it's kind of like a flat response. But with the ECQs, we are able to like really um, intensify, let's say, those peaks. So you see really high peaks. And then when your target concentration is decreasing, you really see that decline in target concentration. So in contrast to the CQs, I think the ECQs give you a better visualization of the data as well. Excellent. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boring or Ingelheim representative to learn more. Betsy, this has been tremendous information. I think it's very uh, practical and, and helps um, us from over-interpreting comparisons uh, across different tests on different days, different labs, etc. cetera. Um, I really appreciate you sharing this information with our listeners on the podcast. No, thank you for having me. It's been great. Yeah, hope everyone uh, gets to enjoy the topic. Thanks for coming on the show, Betsy. Um, and to the audience, thank you very much for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please check out our website at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out on our next episode. Thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.